family members. It's the holiday season. Yes, sir. Especially family members and friends. They're not going to be happy with you when you tell them the truth. They're not going to be happy with you when you pull their coattail and say, you know, you got a problem with this, you know. You that's that's an issue. You need you need to fix that, you know. Yes. They they don't like being told the truth, but tell somebody tell them the truth anyway. Amen. Those closest to you, those people, yet the truth must still be smoke spoken. Get this, no one gets delivered from you telling them a lie. Amen. Amen. You can't deliver me, Elder, telling me the lie. Amen. If you love me, tell me the truth. Get me right so I won't get left. Amen. No one gets delivered from you being quiet when you should be speaking the truth. Many times we get around family, friends, co-workers, enemies, people in Walmart, people in the grocery store, people in the restaurants, and we see wrong being done, but we sit with our mouths shut. Amen. Oh. Amen. We dare not speak up and correct anything because we fear them not speaking to us, or we fear confrontation, or we fear them getting upset with us. We fear them speaking against us. You've got to know how much power God has invested in you. That when wrong goes on in your presence, you make wrong right. Amen. We are, a, we are defenders of the gospel. Amen. We walk in the spirit of apologetics. We defend the gospel of Christ. And when you sit and you see wrong being done and you don't defend it, then you are taking part in it. Amen. Amen. Sister Logan in the back will tell you when people come into the office and they use profanity, I... What do I do? Oh, I correct him. Amen. Stop that cussing. Amen. I don't care if you're older than me. There's a man on our job on age with my father, if not older. And she'll tell you just this week I corrected him. Because in this, in this age, I don't care about your age. I don't care about your title. If Amen. you're wrong, you're just wrong. Amen. And if you're bold enough as a demon to speak that foolishness in my presence, yes, I'm bold sir. enough as a woman of God to correct you in their presence. Amen. Amen. Because see, what happens, people of God, is when you sit in the midst of wrong and you keep your mouth closed, the people around you that's watching you, that heard you say you love the Lord and you go to church, they're watching you and saying, oh, well, she must condone it. Well, let me go ahead and slip my little two cents in too. Amen. You have just given them the green light to sin in your midst. Let me tell you something. God has put too much in you. He's put too much holiness in you for you to sit in the midst of sin and be comfortable with it. If you're comfortable in the midst of sin, then you need to check your Holy Ghost. Yes, right. Yes, ma'am. Proverbs 13 and 17 says, Irresponsible talk. Makes a real mess of things. Irresponsible talk. Makes a real mess of things. You got to be careful when your mouth is always running. I don't know what scripture it is. But it's in the New Testament. That it talks about when you talk so much. You are bound to sin eventually. Amen. You are bound to gossip. You are bound to lie. You are bound to exaggerate. You are bound to do something. You don't have no business doing when you talk Amen. to. Tell somebody stop talking so much. Stop talking so much. Amen. Y'all still love me? Yes. Jesus is Lord. He knew what would happen if he angered these people, but he spoke the truth anyway. Although the truth may hurt at the moment, the truth also comes to heal. Amen. Amen. It's almost like getting medication through an IV. I run from needles, Sister Kim, literally. They got to treat me like a two-year-old When if you want to stick my finger. I cut up real bad. I don't like needles. I could never be a phlebotomist. I run. I need y'all to really hear me. I run from needles. If you say shot, doctor, I feel better. I'm good. I don't think I need nothing. I'm all right. But the truth is almost like medicine being given through a needle Amen. or through an IV. It stings for the moment. But after a while, when it starts flowing through the bloodline, you begin to feel better. People telling you the truth may sting you for the moment. But if you sit there for a minute and let the truth work through your blood, I ain't, I ain't talking about your DNA. I'm talking about the blood of Jesus. If you allow it to work through your blood, 
your blood. Eventually, healing and deliverance will take place. But the problem with a lot of us is we want to run from the truth like I run from a needle. Amen. We don't want to hear it because we don't want to change. We we say we want to change. We say we want change in our midst, but we don't want to do anything to change it. Come on, we want to sing the same songs. We want to pray the same prayer. We want to preach the same message. We want to play the same music. Yes. Come on, we want to do everything the same, but then we want change. Change is not a change, my pastor said, until it's changed. Yes, sir. They wanted to kill him. But verse 30 tells me, it says, but he passed right through the crowd and went on his way. Don't you know that when we speak the truth and do what's right, even when people plot against us, okay. God will allow us to pass right by them with no harm being done to us. Amen. Jesus escaped death many times. I'm almost done. Jesus escaped death many times. He spoke the truth, healed and delivered people. Those folks got mad and Jesus took flight every time to another town. He, he took flight and he left. He flew to another town. So we fast forward now to verse 31 where it says he came down to Capernaum. Now in verse 16, he was in Nazareth. And when I looked this up, Deacon Hannah, the, the time passed the right to get from Nazareth to Capernaum in a vehicle is 51 minutes. To get from Capernaum to Nazareth by foot because they didn't have cars, Amen. was nine hours and 25 minutes. Nine hours and 25 minutes. If I walk from here to, here to Kmart, I'm calling somebody to come and pick me up half the way because I'm out of breath and I can't do it. But he walked nine hours and 25 minutes. And the Bible does